Okay, hi boys and girls. Today what we're going to do is we're going to have a little look at the battery pack that we took out of the Mach-E. Uh, to help us out today is Mark Ellis. Mark is our um, um, expert on battery technology. Um, he's got like, I don't know, 100 years um, <laughs> in the battery least, industry. Least. And Victor, um, Victor is going to be helping me take the lid off because it's semi-heavy. And, um, and you'll notice we're all geared up. So um, let's, uh, let's get this ball rolling. Uh, Victor, can you take that in and let's stand it up over here so we can have a look at between, um, between the two uh, battery covers. Um, this is the Mach-E, bring it close over here. So we got the Mach-E, keep going, keep going. Oh, we need to get beyond it, there we go. Okay, now we can back up and let's stand your end up, okay? Yeah, your end goes up. Hang on, let me okay. get over here. Yep, there we are. Okay, so so we're looking at um, we're looking at the difference between the Mach E and the um, ID the Mach E and the ID four. Or sorry, the ID four and the Mach E. So um, so we we're looking at slightly bigger. The Mach E is slightly bigger than the ID four. Um, the uh, the Mach-E is um, sitting here at about um, 4,086 square inches. Um, if you're uh, metrified, then uh, it's uh, 26, um, 301 square centimeters. Then over here, this is like uh, 14 and a half kilograms. <clears throat> on this side, on this side, we're looking at. Uh, uh, three, sorry, 3,420 square inches. Um, and for the weight, we're looking at, um, or for sorry, centimeters. for the centimeters, we're looking at uh, 22,064. Now, there's a difference in weight between these two. And I think we covered it up. I think it's on the back side. But this one here weighs, um, like I said, 14 and a half kilograms. And I think on this side, I've got the weight, I think it's 17, yeah. It's 7.3 kilograms. So quite a bit of difference between the two, even though there's not that much area difference. Um, so we got aluminum versus uh, sheet molded compound. Now, uh, there's a lot of different ways of making these different things, but one thing that we have noted is that, uh, for some reason or other, um, people have a, more of a tendency to get extra weight out of something that should weigh less. So it could be because of uh, fear or something, but uh, this is like maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, two or three millimeters thick. I just don't understand I, why this one here is um, is uh, so much thinner and so much lighter. Well, I think one of the basic differences could be is that this has been designed to incorporate some MVH on both the backside and the top side. So there's strength in these structures mm. that I think help with the MVH issue with the well, uh, entire battery pack. I'm looking at something similar here current. too. I've got these, um, I've got these um, uh, depressions here that obviously are going to give it strength. I'm also noticing that there's a lot of uh, foam, uh, 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 robotically uh, uh, applied foam. And then if we turn this thing down, we can see that, hang on, this bucket is not being helpful. We turn this down, we can see that we also have um, sealing, and uh, that's what that anaerobic is. And then we've also got the, uh, the, the foam on this foam side as well. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to say all the rationale and reasoning behind everything, but I'm sure that they've got a reason. It's just that there's a dramatic difference in weight big, and um, uh, compared to the area. A big difference. Yeah. So, yeah, this is considerably bigger, and it functionally is about the same thing. Well, it's just a cover, really. Right. So it might be because they had some sort of a fear of what's going on in uh, in here. Um, but before we get off the cover, maybe we should mention that uh, there is a tremendous number of little screws around here. If you have a look, um, I don't know if you want to count them all up. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So we have uh, 64, 64 screws just holding the top on, and that doesn't oh. count all the other ones that we know are, yeah. uh, are in there. 60, yeah, there's the bag right there. 64 is on here. 64. Yes. So there we go. We have the right number. So 64 screws to hold on a lid, um, I guess that could be excessive. But the one thing that I did find out, can I give one of those things? Um, these, are, um, these are not the screws I would probably pick. Um, you'll notice that it's got, um, um, it's got a UBS head, so unified bearing surface head. And then it's got a washer to disperse the load because it's plastic. But uh, there's no dog point on here. And uh, my guys tell me that um, uh, that uh, that uh, some of these things look uh, uh, a little rough. Um, it looks to me like maybe they're uh, they're torque prevailing, which means you just flatten the threads and turn it into a friction device. But uh, but that's kind of uh, kind of unusual. The other thing that I thought was interesting was um, uh, the guys at Volkswagen. Here, let's tip this down. The guys at Volkswagen um, they. Um, and I'll just tip it a little bit. Um, they had a pretty massive seal. This one's got a very, very shallow seal all the way around. Um, and I'm not even sure if that contacts because it's inboard. It might, uh, it might contact. I'm yeah, not sure, could, but you uh, could see it lift off as they took screws really? out. Really? Yep. Well, this is much, much different than what uh, what the guys at um, at Volkswagen, Volkswagen did. So. So there's, uh, there's kind of like the mechanical things. So let's go over here and have uh, Mark talk to us a little bit about what we're seeing with the, uh, the battery and the connections and, um, and, and basically the construction of the battery. This looks like yeah. it's made out of plastic case. Yeah, as opposed to what Chevy is doing in their bulk, this battery pack has pouch cells similar to the bolt, but instead of using metallic covers, they've gone and used plastic throughout. And philosophically, they've done the same thing that the Chevy Bolt does, is they've tied everything together with screws on either end to keep compression on the pouch cells. And it's actually a pretty elegant looking assembly because the uh, end plates are die cast aluminum and it has basically a nice mounting method that quite simple compared to a lot of the other battery packs we've seen. Mm. This, uh, I, did you mention that, uh, that this is SK battery pack? It's SK Innovation batteries, yeah. yes, as opposed to uh, Samsung. Or I mean LG, LG yeah. chem batteries. Yeah, so one of the things that you should know is that um, LG and SK, at one time they were kind of like blood brothers, and then, uh, and then they had a falling out, and uh, SK uh, picked up the order from Ford and, uh, and uh, uh, Ford. VW, I think, yeah. Anyway, that led to a lawsuit, and the lawsuit just recently was settled. Actually, it had to have uh, the presidential intervention that, uh, that was needed. Anyway, the, uh, the deal is that they paid billions of dollars, SK did, to, um, to the folks over at um, LG because of patent infringements and whatnot. So, so anyway, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yeah. the... Um, uh, voltage on each one of these batteries. Yes, they've got uh, two different size battery <coughs> modules. This two small ones, I think were 32 some volts. And the larger modules are 40 something volts each. Yeah, and about 0.3. 0.3. Uh, so, yeah. And so so the other uh, <coughs> interesting thing about it is they do have all of the power electronics for the battery pack voltage leaving 
the battery pack to go to the motors and the vehicle. They also have um, a very high wire count battery management system. And I'm not too surprised about that. The last Ford battery pack that I took apart was for the uh, Ford C-Max. And it also had these large numbers of connectors going into the modules for the battery management system. So it'll be interesting once we get this taken apart to see how these multitudes of wires connect to the cells inside. Mm. The uh, Chevy Bolt in LG style um, battery modules have a circuit board in them and they actually run the wires internal to the module and then they run a bus wire out to the main motherboard and this looks like everything is connected at the end of the uh, module here and that would be this would be a rather small area for a circuit board for the entire uh, battery management system so it'll be interesting to see what we get once we start taking this apart again mm. well one thing uh, that i was looking at uh, at this end uh, was the um <coughs> was these um circular well the uh, first off i was looking at the fuses okay so you can touch this because it's plastic but my hands are not getting any closer to fuses so now in here we've got several fuses and then we've got these, uh, these round deals, which I initially uh, was mistaken on. Yeah, so we, we believe they are contactors. Yeah, relays. relays so the, uh, yep. at the end of the day, um, I, um, I haven't seen that before. So, um, so we're kind of interested to see what this circuit looks like when we get it to pieces. Yeah. The one thing that struck me was how much more wire there is in this than what I normally would see. It's, uh, it just looks like a lot more. Yeah. Um, the daisy chaining you can see real easy. Um, you can see how it collects, goes into serial and in parallel. This one here is uh, much easier, or well, it's easier to figure out, but it's uh, pretty much, a little, it's a little more expensive to get this job done. But everything seems to be in snapped in place. The other interesting thing is you've got your uh, coolant for cooling yeah. the battery modules coming in at this position, and it's going down the middle. And what I don't like is there are a number of hose connections. So there's a cooling plate for each one of these two groups of modules all the way down and they've got coolant lines interconnecting all of these together rather than it being one uniform plate that would take all of the fluid. So, you know, I look at every, every fluid connection as a place to leak. Well, the fluid connections and also the electrical and electronic connections, the more connections you've got, the more opportunity you've got for a problem. Okay, so the other interesting thing is the way they've, uh, they've created the, uh, the base here. Um, if you look down below, right down in the, uh, inside the, the, the battery tray, um, you can see what looks like, um, like a red dimple. Um, and in essence, that's what it is. Toggle lock is a, a punch at the top and a receiver anvil at the bottom. And when the punch comes down, it pushes material so that it kind of goes like that. And that holds it in place. You don't need a welding uh, operation or anything. It's very rugged. Uh, uh, I used to I use it quite a bit. Um, we use it in aircraft as well. So this uh, this type of process is uh, how they put these um, these side members together, these dividers. And if you remember in the um, in the uh, VW, they were castings. These are just simple sheet metal um, folded parts. There's not much, uh, not much to uh, look at or think about here. It's a very simple design in comparison to the castings that um, that yes. the folks over at VW had. Just plate stock. Yeah, it's just plate stock. Yeah. yeah. So we haven't had a chance to check out 
what types of aluminum are where. And obviously, it's still buttoned up. Um, otherwise, we'd have some fairly heavy-duty gear on to, uh, to make sure we didn't get hurt. But uh, at all in all, it's different than anything. I, I can't think of anybody else that had anything no, like no, this. No. So it's a little different than what we've seen in the past. Not to mean that uh, it's bad or good. We'll wait until we um, we'll wait until we take everything to pieces before we start making any comments like that. But the one thing that catches my eye is there's a lot of wire here, a lot more wire than I'd be expecting. Um, so that's some of the bad stuff and way too many screws. And then the good part is, well, the toggle lock is a good idea. I um, I haven't seen what's what it looks like inside these batteries, but um, uh, this will be our first kick at the cat yeah, with uh, SK batteries. So. so the other the other interesting thing though is I do tend to like the fact that they've broken this up into modules because oh, yeah. you. then you can robotically load these in. Yeah. You can uh, uh, manually handle them without getting into the high voltage area area and like with Tesla where they've got the big long modules you know handling this stuff physically is going to be a lot simpler in the building of the battery pack. Right. Well, the other thing is <clears throat> this this is a battery pack that can be reused. Um, if we're looking at recycling, I don't care what it's made out of, I'm just going to crush the daylights out of it and pull out what I want. But if I want to reuse the batteries, the Tesla battery pack is a little tough. This battery pack, like the BMW i3, right. you can individually remove these things and even though they may not have a, enough power to run a car, they would still have enough power to run your house. So the good news here is that reuse and recycling uh, looks like it's looks got good. some advantages here. Yeah. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, and, uh, and thanks for watching Monroe Live. We'll be talking to you again with more on the Mach-E. Thank you.